What's up guys, in today's video we're going to be checking out the new plugin from Plugin Alliance, the Silverbull MK2 by Louder Than Liftoff. Now I have to admit, I'm a little depressed this plugin came out. I've had the hardware unit for a couple months and I kind of felt like it was a secret weapon of mine, and now there's a plugin version of it. But I guess the good news is now I can use it on more than just one track. Today we're going to check out the actual plugin, I'll show you how it all works, and then we'll compare it to my analog unit to see how close they got. Let's go. All right, guys, so here is the Silver Bullet plug-in, one of my favorite hardware units I've ever had. Uh, but you have the power button here, on and off. Then you have this pre-EQ or post-tight. So you can either run this thing pre the EQ or post-tight, so just the EQ. So and in other ways, like they have an insert button on the actual analog unit, so you could use it like that by putting one plug-in, then you know whatever you wanted to insert in between it, and then the post after, if you wanted to do it like that. I usually just run this thing in mix. It works great that way. Um, the first unit is the Mojo unit. And so what this is, is there's a, a Neve preamp sound and an, an API preamp sound. And so if you want the Neve, you just turn it on, hit the Mojo, and there will be the end. And, and the cool thing is, is uh, which, which isn't on the hardware, is these are matched. So when you turn up the gain, it turns down the out because otherwise, you know, when you don't do that, it just gets super loud. Um, you actually have to do that manually on the hardware unit like this. But um, here they have it for you, which is cool. So you can have the knee version, the API version works the same way. Or what's cool is you can run the API into the Neve or the Neve into the API. Either way it works, you can do it a couple different ways and it makes it pretty versatile for all the different sounds you can get out of it. Next is the Mojo C color. And what's built into this uh, when you first turn it on, it's called the Hitmaker 4000. So if you ever look at the hardware, they actually have different modules you can put into the hardware that will change the C Mojo section sound. Now, what comes with the hardware is the Hitmaker 4000, which is, from what I understand, the mixed amp signal of, you know, a famous British console by the name of SSL. So the way this module works is it actually turns it up and down at the same time just by doing the C drive. So it's doing what these are doing in essence, but you also have a mix knob here instead. Now what's added to the plugin, which I don't have on my hardware is this Mojo C selector. So you have the hit maker, which is like mine, but then there's four other different versions. There's a bit maker, the vinyl saturation, and then these other two, which we'll take a listen to further on. Next, we move on to the EQ. So it's a Baxendale EQ. You have low frequency, high frequency, an air band basically and you can change the way they do it it's it's not so much by the actual frequency it's by these names and it's fun to use like this because it makes you think more musically so you have sheen um pre's mids body bass sub one sub two for the bass section and the air band's just air right then you also have this lower section so you have tight which what that does is it puts a 12 db slope on there high pass filter and then i'm going to read this from this little section because it makes more sense than i can explain it frequency switcher selects between two high pass filter options 12 db per octave at 25 hertz with a slight resonant bump at 40 hertz which gives tape like response for mixes or a 12 dB octave Butterworth at 50 Hertz, which is well suited for tracking. So the bump can be used for two different purposes in a way. Next, this vintage button alters the high end frequency to respond more like a British console, AKA a Neve. And then this aspect ratio is their way of doing width. And it's pretty cool. It sounds really good. And you don't have to tweak anything with it. It's just, it's there. Moving on to this bottom section, you have your presets here with a, a B, C, and D. So you know, it's nice you can have four different presets that you might use all the time and switch through them to see which one sounds better. This next section is interesting. It's called circuit bend. And so on an analog vi device, sometimes you can like take one thing and put it into another and it will, it will make the unit respond in a really odd way. And it can also blow up your unit. This allows you to do that and get some uni unique sounds out of it just in a plugin, which I definitely won't do with my hardware unit. The next section is the Dyna Realm. And what this does is, is, is how the left and right channels respond to each other, which can give you a subtle left to right differences depending on which one you, you pick. Analog one is the most like the actual hardware unit. Then they got this SIM, which is more of a digital unit. So there won't be much difference between the left or right. Analog two is a not as subtle version of analog one. And then you have flux and sync, which give you depth and rate controls to 
possibly make it more musical or just change the way it kind of interacts. So you can play with that. We probably won't get into that today, but that option is there. And then lastly, you have headroom. And what I would love they had on the analog would be an output trim because this thing definitely changes in level. And so sometimes it's hard to know if you're making it sound better or it's just louder, but it's cool to have this on the plug-in version. Lastly, you can click the louder than lift off icon if you want the black version or the white version. And one really kind of weird, unique thing that I found out is if you go back to where I was, if you hit this silver bullet button, right? There's a serial number here. And I'll read what it says. It says, just like a real hardware unit, each licensed copy of the plugin is given a unique serial number. That serial number identifies a unique build of the digitally modeled analog circuit. Using discrete components, selected from the virtual parts bin, enter any six digital numbers followed by the return key to access a new variation of the digital model. I don't know maybe if that's the TNT built inside or what, but that's pretty cool if they have some way of making it slightly different for every model. That's pretty cool in a digital world. Before we get started, some listening examples. So I just wanna show you how close these EQ curves are. This is matched. You can barely see this little white one here is the plug-in and the green is my analog unit. And you can see it's, it's, it's basically spot on. And this is with all the EQs slightly changed. One thing to note is it's a little bit different on the knobs here on my analog unit than it is on the knobs on the hardware to get the EQ to match. But the cool thing is, is it does match. And maybe that's just variation on different analog units. That doesn't really bother me much. The fact that they match 100% is really cool. So the first example we're gonna listen to is on a stereo mix. That's how I use this unit a lot of times. And this is actually the settings I usually start with on the stereo bus. Um, I have a little bit of Neve in here, just a bit mixed, a little bit of the SSL, about 50%, um, but 50% on the mix too. Uh, and then this tone, it's just a little boost in the low frequencies. Uh, it's, it's actually smaller on the analog unit. It's hard to tell from the camera, but uh, it's, it's usually about a dBr2 for each one. And this is actually usually a dBr2 for the air band, but this is how I was able to get it to match. And then we have the aspect ratio on as well. Now, one thing to note is there is a bit of gain when you do this. So I've put a dry one in here and I've turned it up 4 dB. So they're all pretty close. So I'm gonna start with the dry one just so you guys can hear like what, this thing can do. And then I'm, I'll AB between the plug-in and analog. So if you guys look over here, it says analog plug-in dry. So it should be pretty easy to tell what's what. Uh, this song is Heavyweights by my buddy Trip Carter. Let's start with the dry. So as you can hear, and what's very depressing for me is they sound so close. Like I would not be able to tell you which one's the analog version in a blind test, like so, so close. And it's a little bit of annoying, but I'm glad to be able to have this as a plugin. I can go anywhere with it and I have the silver bullet. Now let's move on to drums and let's really drive this thing and see if it's still as close when we're using the Mojo circuits. So once again, these are really close. I do feel like the plugin is, is, is breaking up a little bit more and I, that could just be a gain stage thing, but it feels like the analog one's holding it together just a touch bit more, but they still sound really close. 
while we're on this though, let me just go through these different Mojo sections so you guys can hear them. So this will be the uh, Mojo C for the C Mojo color section. So as you guys can hear, if you're you know doing some some heavy distortion stuff, or, or even if not, you wanted to use these mildly, it does give you a few more colors than sadly my analog box does. Okay, so lastly, let's really push this thing just to see if when it really starts breaking up, if we can really start hearing a difference between the plugin and the analog. So what I've done is I've just cranked the Neve. We got a good amount of distortion going. We're gonna start with the plugin and then go to the analog. Here we go. So this is where I feel like plugins still sometimes don't quite like add up. You hear like the snare transients just a, a bit more there on the analog version compared to the plugin where it's just kind of getting pushed in. Um, so there I do feel like we are hearing a bit of a difference between the two, but other than that, when you're just running this thing, I mean, how often are we gonna be slamming this thing to distortion? To me, it sounds pretty close to the analog. All right guys, so that is the rundown on the Silver Bullet MK2 from Louder Than Liftoff. I'm pleasantly and unpleasantly surprised how close it sounds to my analog unit. Um, let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments below. If you need your songs mixed or mastered, hit me up at mixandmastermysong.com. Talk to you soon.